Introducing the all new Real Sim Gear Home Simulator for the Diamond DA40. Imagine being able to fly to your destination in the sim before you go there in real life, whether it's with your instructor or with your family. That is exactly why we've built this, the ultimate training tool for both initial flight training and ongoing proficiency in the Diamond DA40. And in this video, we're gonna show you exactly what it takes to take your new simulator out of the crate, perform the simple assembly, and set the software up to get you flying your sim as fast and as easy as possible. So first, let's talk about what you'll need for the job. To uncrate and set up your simulator, you'll need a drill with a number two Phillips head or a screwdriver, but it will take a little bit longer. The Allen key set that's provided in the accessories box, which is inside the crate. Also inside the accessories box is a paper copy of the setup guide. So if you have any questions that this video doesn't answer for you, you can find it in this guide. You might also need a pair of box cutters to help you open up a few things safely, an optional dolly or furniture sliders for easier transport, and most importantly, two people to safely handle and move the simulator components. The simulator is heavy and requires teamwork to avoid injury or damage. Always lift using the designated handles, use your legs, and take your time during this process. Let's do it. To start, let's begin uncrating the simulator. Use your drill to remove all of the Phillips head screws from every seam of the crate, starting with the top. After the top is removed, you can begin removing the sides of the crate in any order. It helps to have your friend hold onto the crate walls to prevent them from falling over. Once you remove the crate walls, you can remove the accessories box and begin pulling the items out and laying them out for easy access. If you need to move this box through doorways or up and down some stairs, you'll want to at least open it up to grab the provided Allen key out of the box first as we'll need it for the next step. Around the simulator, there will be several brackets holding the sim in place. You'll need to remove all of these using the provided Allen key. After the mounts are all removed, go ahead and untie the two straps on each side of the sim and remove them entirely. Once you have all of the straps and brackets removed from the sim, from here, you have a couple of options. If you need to carry the simulator through doorways or up and down some stairs, you can take off the top or what's called the console of the simulator in order to make transporting it a lot lighter. This is simple as it's only a couple of thumb screws on each side to remove the console. Additionally, you can remove the monitor bracket from the base of the simulator for easier transport. This is attached with four screws and requires an Allen key as well. Otherwise, if you're only moving it a short distance from the crate, grab your strongest friend and lift it off of the crate and place it in its final destination. Be sure to leave some room in the back so you can have access to the cables. Okay, now that the simulator is in place, we need to connect the two platforms. To do that, you'll need to install these brackets that came in your accessories box. Once you locate them, you'll see that they have numbers on them. The left bracket has a label that ends in 424, and the right bracket has a label that ends in 443. So on the right bracket, remove the M6 screw and set it aside for later. Then install the right bracket on the right side of the seat platform using the Allen key provided in the accessories box. Now with the right bracket installed, grab your friend to help you tilt the table section back onto its rear feet so you can slide the seat's platform forward and gently lower it onto the right bracket. Remember, this section is heavy, so please use caution and clear communication when tilting it back. Next, install the left bracket on the left side of the sim and once that left bracket is installed, you can then reinsert the M6 screw that you set aside from earlier back into the right bracket in order to lock the right side in place. And now it's time to install the computer and connect all of the cables. Grab the computer box, remove the PC, and place it under the sim on the right hand side. Now connect the labeled cables to the back of the PC. You'll be plugging in the following an HDMI cable for the Instructor Operator Station, or IOS, a table USB, that's a USB 3.0, a console USB, it's also a USB 3.0, there are two of these, a rudder USB, that's a USB 2.0, so it's white, and an AC power. Now it's time to set up the throttle console. On the front of the simulator console, Unscrew the two thumb screws where the throttle console goes. Then slide the throttle console into place and reinstall the two thumb screws. Then under the seat, there's a cable that plugs into the side of the throttle console. Connect that, and then you'll need to plug in the remaining cables into the back of the throttle console. 
you'll have two coming from the bottom of the simulator console, as well as one separate cable from the accessories box, and one USB cable from the bottom of the throttle. Now onto the instructor station. From the accessories box, grab the keyboard tray and monitor mounting assembly, the keyboard trackpad combo, and the touchscreen monitor. Remove the four screws from the back of the monitor, then attach it to the mount using those same screws. Now we need to remove the four screws on the lower part of the monitor assembly using the Allen key. Keep these nearby as we'll need to use them in the very next step. The next step being using those four screws to mount the instructor station on the simulator console's monitor arm. You're going to need a friend to hold the monitor assembly while you use the Allen key to replace the screws that you just removed. You'll then need to plug the labeled cables into the back of the instructor station. That's iOS power, instructor operator station power, iOS HDMI, and iOS USB, which is a USB 2.0 plug. Now we need to take the wireless keyboard dongle which is located inside of the keyboard box and plug it into a USB port on the side of the simulator console. You'll then turn on the keyboard and place it on the tray. Now we need to plug in the console power connections. And so at the back of the console, plug in the labeled cables. There will be two console USBs, which is a USB 3.0 plug and a console power, which is a 12 volt plug. And now onto the TV stand and monitor installation. So grab the TV stand power cable from the accessories box and plug it into the PDU or the power distribution unit on the back of the console and make sure the power switch is off for now. Use the included AC cable to connect the system to a wall outlet. Then flip the large red switch on the PDU to power it up. Now from the accessories box, grab the TV stand remote and raise the post about two feet. Then you'll need to remove the four M5 screws from the top of the post using the provided Allen key. You'll then mount the main bracket using those same screws and then attach the secondary TV bracket with the M8 screws and nuts. Now this video shows the installation for the 49 inch OLED monitor. And so if you're installing a single TV or a triple display setup, check page 48 of your manual. So for the OLED monitor, attach the included VESA adapter to the monitor following the monitor's manual. Then install the two hanging brackets from the accessories box using the M4 screws. Make sure both brackets use the same slots and holes. Raise the electronic TV stand using the remote to a comfortable height. Then with a friend's help, lift and hang the monitor on the brackets. Then lower the stand until the top of the cockpit dash just overlaps the bottom of the screen. As for the connections into the monitor, you'll need to plug the monitor's power into the PDU, then connect the display port to HDMI adapter to the PC. From there, plug the HDMI cable into the adapter and connect the other end to the monitor. Now onto network connection. There are two options for connecting to the internet and they are direct connect or using Wi-Fi. We recommend direct connection for the best stability. And so to direct connect, we provide an ethernet cable that you can plug into the back of the PC and then plug that directly into your wall if there's internet or into a modem or router. For the Wi-Fi option, we also include a Wi-Fi antenna that you can take these two little screws and install them in the back of the PC. Powering on and off your simulator. So a little bit of a warning here. If you don't follow these next three simple guidelines, you may end up damaging your system. So number one, don't power off the simulator within five minutes of starting it up. So basically you need to give it time to properly boot up. Number two, don't power on the simulator within 30 seconds of shutting it down as it needs time to fully shut down. And number three, always shut down windows before flipping the master power switch to the off position. Seat and control adjustments. Be sure to use the designated handles to get in and out of the sim. There is a handle on the left side of the console to help you get into the seat, as well as a handle underneath the console to assist in pulling the seat forward. To move the seat forward and aft, 
pull on the lever that is underneath the seat. You can also adjust the tilt to be more forward or aft using the side lever. And for bigger adjustments, you'll need to loosen the seat base screws to slide the whole seat forward or back or move the screws to different holes to raise or lower the seat. Lastly, you can adjust the throttle and the mixture resistance with the knob on the right side of the throttle. As for the next steps, you'll simply need to start X-Plane and configure your settings. We cover everything that you need to know in our X-Plane tutorial YouTube series, and there's a link below this video to that playlist. And if you purchase an iPad mount, you'll want to see page 137 for installation. So that wraps up the Diamond DAX Home Simulator Setup Guide. If you have any questions whatsoever, email us at info at realsimgear.com and happy flying.